Good morning and welcome to Milligan Free Will Baptist Church. Good to see everyone. Welcome all those that's watching the, the little box at home or wherever you may be. It's nice to see everybody. Amen. Smiling faces everywhere. The preacher's got a beard and we don't know what in the world's going on. So well, he said Jesus had one so he can have one too. <laughs> So I guess that's right, and get on up here, Russ, and lead us in this song. Brother I've been Russ. missing you, Amen. buddy. Come on up here. <laughs> Sit back there and act like you're just hiding from me. Tell you what, I was about ready to come to your house and get you. I love him. Don't we appreciate Russ? Number 230 in the, uh, in the church, and yeah, in that one, Amazing Grace. Y'all stand with us. Russ, you can use that, any one of those mic there that you want. And let's all sing and rejoice this morning. Amazing Grace. Oh, uh -huh. 
you and you may be seated. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Just feels right in here this morning. Once again, it's nice to see everyone. And, and since Mark is hampered a little bit, I'll try to do some of our uh, normal things. Uh, let's do birthdays. Anybody had a birthday in the past week? Would you come and give your offering? Anyone? Brother Chris has had one. Nancy Johnson's. Happy birthday. Let's sing happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many, many more. All right, all right. Well, let's see here. I know we've had some anniversaries. I've had one. And uh, I have, let's see. Dad and mom's had an anniversary. How long you's been married? 65 years. Well, Dad, you got to come up here and put something in the offering plate. Young lady, how long have y'all been married? 13 years. All right. My goodness, we got enough. We got all kinds of. All right. How long? 28. 28 years. Eleven years. All right. Is Debbie, Debbie's, I thought Debbie was coming. They've been running late. Yeah, I put your money in for you. You put mine in. I ain't got none with me. Kathy has Yeah. You can put it in there. For both of them. How many years, brother? 42 years I heard somebody say once here of marital bliss. <laughs> that, that's for me. I don't know about Debbie. if you'd have to ask her. That's why she's not here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a doing the announcements and he's a he's a picking on me, Steve. Hey, the role has been reversed. The I'm role, being you right now, yeah. <laughs> the role has been called up yonder. That's a good old song. Well, let's see. I know we ladies eight have got something coming up. The thirteenth of what? And what are you doing? You have a meeting, ladies, the thirteenth of Ju July. And this is concerning uh, yard sale. One of your ways to make a little bit of money for the great work you do. All right. And do we have any, any more announcements? Uh, I can't think of them. Yes. He sure is. Real soon. Amen. I'm tired of this old world. Anybody down here, anybody in here tired of this old wicked, sinful, vile world? Jesus isn't wanted in a lot of places, but Jesus, you're wanted here. Jesus, you're wanted in my heart. Jesus, you're wanted in my marriage. Jesus, you're wanted in my home. We just need to kick the devil out of a lot of places. That's what we need to do. Well, glory, I better wait. Preaching's coming in a few minutes. Well, ours are, I thought that's pretty dry. The Mark gave us some announcements, and it was all good ones, too. I tell you what we're going to do at this time is we're going to, we're going to have a word of prayer. And I will this morning ask if there's any. I know Brother Lawrence Boone, we need to keep that family. There's my lovely wife. Uh, in, uh, I told them how many years of wonderful marital bliss that you'd have, <laughs> Miss Debbie. There's my son and my daughter-in-law. Thankful for what God's done for them. They look great. Praise the Lord. 
Uh, if people out there is interested, uh, everybody in the church knows they just had a Amber gave her husband a, a kidney. Yeah, amen. Boy, that's a selfless act, isn't it? Amen. And he's Thank doing great. Lord. She's amen. doing great. Thank God amen. and I praise God for it. And they brought my wife back home. Hadn't had her in three weeks. What a relief for her. Boy, I tell you what. <laughs> I'm being all serious and he's cutting jokes. I'm, I'm, I can't blame him. I wear him out. But I'm glad we're home. And, uh, no, I'm a kid. No, I know, Mark. It don't yeah. bother me. I got thicker skin than you do. Uh, let's see now. Uh, we're going to get back on prayer request. Well, that was a praise item. Uh, we want to thank God for that. Amen. Brother Josh. Oh, I know Ben that played ball with you. But there are neighbors over there. Yeah. So everybody hear this. Do remember the Alex Goulds family. Uh, ben, I've watched him play ball with Josh Allen for years at Happy Valley. Uh, there are neighbors over there in Martindale. Uh, 23? 23 or 26-year-old woman, eight months pregnant, and uh, was found dead the other morning. And uh, got a little three-year-old girl, am I right? Two or three-year-old girl. Let's really intercede for this precious family. Amen. Pray for the ghouls. Let's remember, continue to uh, remember Gene. Amen. Uh, I know he's going through a lot. And, and Brenda, too. She cares for him. And uh, let's see. Uh, who else? What other prior request? Kathy. Let's remember all these. Yes, sister. Yes, you, anybody would adopt five children, you, that tells you what kind of people they are. They had a child Yeah, oh my goodness. That's great. Yes. Okay. I thought I saw another hand. Okay. Wes. Unspoken request. I'll ask us all to stand in reverence to our Lord, and I'll ask Brother Wayne if he will take these requests to the throne this morning, ask the blessings on our service.
Be seated. Price family, come on up. They've got us a couple specials this morning. Before we sing, just y'all pray for us. Um, tell them my throat's both under the well. We've been sucking on cough drops like they're hard candy. And uh, plus, uh, just these two songs that uh, has been on my heart. Um, they both kind of deal with what's going on yeah. and the world around us, and they both have to deal with um, just the Lord's just helping us out when we need them. Um, this first one, it's my papa's favorite song. He's battling cancer, like most y'all know. Uh, and it's called Help Is On the Road. So if y'all, any of y'all are struggling this morning, just listen to the words and just don't give up hope. So.
with a smile on his face, he replied, I'll see all my friends in the house. front if I can. You might want to lock me in here. <laughs> I, told, hey, I told Brother Josh, some of you didn't hear me, I said, you might need to lock me in here. <laughs> uh, Brother Wes, you had pulled me over there and I forgot what type of wheelchair this was. And you know, some of them have these rollers on them. And I reached for them, they weren't there, Brother Johnny. So I thought, if I'm going to get where everybody can see me, somebody got to push me. Uh, it's good to be back. I want everyone to know here, we love you. And most of all, if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ, He loves you. He loves you so much. Is that uh, was the second song y'all sang? Third song too about it. Calvary's all over every one of them songs. Uh, he went to an old rugged cross and he died for your sins and, and my sins. And I got, I got one question for everyone in here. Anybody in this place love Jesus? Hey, it's a fact he loves uh, you and me. I want to thank everyone for your cards, for your prayers. Uh, for your visits, just every uh, act of kindness you have, uh, you have shown toward us. And, and uh, boy, tell you what, it'd take me a long time to tell you what all we've been through. 
But I uh, couldn't have gone through it without my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but I couldn't have gone through it without my precious wife, Sister Kathy Street. Amen. I love you, Kathy. And uh, I was telling some before church started, I have a deeper appreciation now for people that can't walk and people that have to depend on others to, uh, to take care of them. And uh, has any, anybody in this place ever been in a place where you had to depend on somebody else to take care of you? You know, when you think about that, you can't take yourself to heaven. I can't take myself to heaven on my own. We have to have somebody else to care for us. Somebody else that we've got to depend on. Somebody else that's a lot better than we are. Somebody else that was sinless, that was pure, that was holy, that was blameless. And yes, his destination was the cross. And yet, he was conceived in the Virgin Mary's womb. And yet, we know Harry the Great tried to kill him, but God preserved him. Listen, I have no doubt in my mind, I know we've got people here today, including your preacher, the devil's tried to kill you, but you're here because of the mercies of God, because of the protection of God, because of the preservation of God. And I tell you, I'm just glad that I'm a Christian. I'm glad that my, uh, my inheritance is reserved in heaven. The devil can't get it. The thieves can't break through and steal it. We're going to receive a corruptible body someday. Hallelujah. I'm just a preparing you. I hadn't preached in two weeks and you're going to get it full barrel. I might not get up and be able to run around physically, but I'm running around spiritually in the inner man. And that's why I asked you, Brother Josh, to lock me up. <laughs> I'm going to preach on this subject. Oh, isn't it good to see Joel, Keith, and Amber, and Debbie Amen. back? Amen. <laughs> Love y'all. Praise God. Continue to pray for them. I can't think of any greater person or any greater subject to preach on today. Boy, the Lord was in your all songs. Here's what I'm going to preach to you today. Well, I'm going to try. Jesus, what a Savior. <laughs> I didn't come here to talk to you about my accolades and all that I have accomplished in life. Hey, you might be a millionaire today and there's nothing wrong with that. You might be pouring Tom's turkey and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're the wealthiest person on God's earth. I'm just happy that I'm saved. A lot of people, it takes a lot to make them happy. Well, let me tell you something. That's your problem. You're looking at things to make you happy. They will for a little while, but who can make you ultimately happy forever now? It's Jesus Christ. Mm. It's good to see some familiar faces back with us. Uh, I've missed the last two weeks. I know we've got several that hadn't got to be with us and you're here for the first time. So uh, church, give them another Milligan welcome. Let them know we love them. Amen. <laughs> Psalm 22. Somebody's calling. His name is Jesus. Amen. Answer that call. <laughs> Amen. Who said we couldn't have a little, little bit of humor and a little bit of fun in the house of the Lord? Amen. I, I got a feeling when I see Jesus, I, I, I know I'm going to fall to this nail scarred feet, but I believe there's going to be a big smile that's over his face and over my face and over all the saints of God that have gone ahead of us. My friend, the cross was not easy. Jesus didn't back down from Calvary. He set his face like a flint, like a rock 
toward Jerusalem knowing that he was going to his ultimate death. But Jesus knew if he hadn't have went to Calvary, millions on top of millions, even billions of souls would have died and went to a devil's hell. But thank God Jesus wasn't scared of the cross and neither should you and I be scared by the cross. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. My goodness, I told Sister Kathy, I got my outline, I got my points, and I probably won't even, even look at it. Probably, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to be a messenger of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I might not be able to stand up on my feet, but I'm glad I can still shout loud from my voice and let the uttermost parts of the earth know what the old song says. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Not the Catholic Church, not the Baptist Church, not the Free Will Baptist Church, not the Methodist Church, not the Presbyterian Church. Might as well get on the Pentecostal Church. <laughs> the Brethren, I don't want to even, the Lutheran, <laughs> the Episcopalian. Hey, religious systems. Churches, as good as churches are if they're preaching the gospel of Christ, a, a church can't save you. Your good works can't save you. Being a good religious person can't save you. Being a good citizen, and I love our country, of the United States of America, can't save your lost soul. There's only one person that can save your soul. And it's not a Catholic priest. It's not the Pope. It's not me. It's not your grandpa, or your grandma, or your daddy, or your mama. The only person that can save your soul is the only one that met all the divine requirements of a holy and righteous God. Amen. What's his name, church? Jesus. Jesus. Say it louder. Jesus. Say it louder. Let all demons hear it. Jesus. Say it louder. Let all the protesters hear it. Jesus. Amen. 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 The Bible tells us the law came to us by Moses, but grace and truth has come to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is such a, a powerful uh, a psalm. It's attributed to David, Psalm 22. Uh, it was written over a thousand years, think about that, before Christ went to the cross. I read somewhere that in this Psalm 22 alone, there are 33 prophecies that were fulfilled at Calvary. My goodness, let's just read it. Will you read it with me? We'll read, let's read. I'm going, I know I probably don't have time to read it all, but let's, let's just read about uh, let's just read about the first 10 verses. Will you read it with me? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy. O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel, our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted, and thou didst deliver them. Look at that. Stop there. Could it be the reason, and it is the reason, why you're struggling and you're morbid and you're dejected and you're depressed is because you haven't trusted in the Lord. I believe the word... I have faith in every word of it. And 
it says our fathers trusted in thee. What did they do? They trusted. The Lord can't help you if you don't trust him. Boy, have I learned more about that in these last few weeks. Our fathers trusted in thee. They, they trusted and thou didst what? I can't hear you. What did he do? Deliver. Thou didst deliver them. How many knows we have a delivering God? Amen. When Jesus went to the cross, he triumphed over the spiritual wickedness and principalities and powers in heavenly places. Yes, I know the devil and the demons, they thought they had Jesus. But you know what? Truth of the matter is, if the devil had the power to do it, he would have killed Jesus or had him killed when he was a baby. But I'm glad that my life and my destiny is not resting in any man, in any religion, or any other person, but the right person. His name is Jesus Christ. You know there's people that are trusted in themselves and their good works to get them to heaven. My friend, that is a foundation that will crumble. There's only one person that will get you through the pearly gates of heaven. And he's the only door into the sheepfold. And his name is... Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. One more time. Jesus. What a lovely name. Amen. What a precious name. All right. You know, many believe that when uh, Jesus was on the cross, that he, he was quoting or reciting this psalm. You remember the two criminals, one to his left and one to his right, and one was railing on Jesus, and the other one said, he rebuked him and said, Hey, what? Lay off of him. You and I, we're getting what we deserve. We're criminals. But he said, this man, he's innocent. He hasn't done anything worthy to be on this cross. Many believe that he heard Jesus quote that scripture. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? By the word of God. You know, I'll get back to the thief, but I, I got to say this while the Holy Spirit's bringing it to my mind, because I might forget it in a few minutes. Amen. And I ain't the only one's forgetful. Don't look at me and say, "Bless his heart." I forgot. <laughs> hey, I'm glad God forgets some things too. I'll get back to it if the Lord wants me to. Amen. I'm glad Jesus is a cry away. Verse 5. They cried unto thee and were delivered. Let me get back to the thief on the cross. He looked at Jesus and he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus looked at him. And he said, you got to get baptized first got to join First Baptist Church. You got to join Milligan Free Will Baptist Church. You got to be a good citizen and a moral person. You got to go to purgatory first and climb a ladder and have your families pay uh, pardons to get you out. Everybody say no to all that. You got to wait a week. Two days. Whew, hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus.
Jesus said to him, today, today, everybody say today. today, today shalt thou be with me in paradise, hallelujah. I believe that old thief got saved and I believe someday we're going to see him shouting all over the streets of glory and I'll be shouting with him. But he didn't have time to get baptized. Yes, he did. He had a spiritual baptism. By the way, I believe in water baptism. Amen? But you better have a spiritual baptism before you enter into a water baptism. Because if you don't have a spiritual baptism and you enter into a, a water baptism, you're going down a dry center and you're coming up a wet center. We're going to stir some things up around here. Are you glad to have Preacher Mark back? I'm glad to be back. Amen. Lord didn't tell us it would be easy. He said if any man will come after me, he said let him first deny himself. We keep running into ourself. Our self gets in our way. Our self gets in the Lord's way. Our self gets in our family's way. Our self gets in our family's way. We just need to get out of the way. Amen. Woo! Glory. I'm going to have to take uh, some advice, Brother Josh, that I gave you. Josh, you know, I'm proud of Brother Josh. Amen, Sister Taylor. Preached his first message uh, a couple of weeks ago. And did a wonderful job. I said, now, now, Josh, you're not going to be a Genesis to Revelation preacher, are you? Remember me telling you, asking you that? And I talked to him about uh, chasing rabbits. I, you say, how do you know about them chasing rabbits? Because I've, I've been after a few. One thing about them, I never caught one yet or shot one. <laughs> but I love you, Brother Josh. Appreciate you so much, Sister Taylor. We love you. God, God's good all the time. All the time. I never get tired of telling the old, old story about a man named Jesus. He was not just a man. He was a man, but he was God manifested in the flesh. There's never been any man like him. Any man ever accomplished what he accomplished through his birth, through his life, and yes, in his death, thank God. God, once and for all, He made a full atonement for our sins. And listen to me, sinner friend, He made an atonement for your sins, but His blood can't do you any good if you don't come to Him personally by faith with the sorrowful heart that you've sinned against Him. Oh my goodness, I'm going to let it fly this morning. Might be my last sermon. I'm sick and tired of these people running around like vigilantes talking about all the rights they've got and how I owe them something. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, oh, no man anything but to love one another for them that love God and love their neighbor. Jesus said we fulfilled the law and the commandments. The white man ain't no better than the black man, but the black man ain't no better than the white man. Hey, listen, I've got, I've got Native American blood flowing through me. Any, any other got, people in here got Native American blood flowing in you? But I don't think, I don't think I'm better than anybody else. Amen. You know, that was what was wrong with that religious crowd. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. They looked down on other people because they weren't as educated as they were. They weren't as religious as they were. But let me tell you something. These poor people, these sinners that were looked down upon, whew, wherever Jesus was, they were attracted to Him. I want others to be attracted to Jesus when they're around me. John, just say, I better make sure I'm locked up. I'm about to come, come unlocked here. <laughs> I'd be all right if I did. Mm. Lord help us. We're running out of time. The Bible says redeeming the time for the days are evil. 
As the old song goes, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. We're living among a bunch of pagans. We're living among a, bunch, among a bunch of people that don't have any bit of knowledge of God or the Word of God. And let me throw this in. And of our rich American history and our heritage. Might as well throw these statute uh, uh, people into it. Listen, church, we've got to stand up against rebels like that because if we let them tear down our statues, the next thing, they'll be coming, setting our churches afire, and they'll be coming to our homes and ransacking our homes and raping our children and stealing. The only way to face evil is call it evil and stand up against it. It might cost your life, but praise God, we'll just go to heaven. I've wanted to say that for a while. Now, preacher, don't, don't get some people razzled and dazzled. Don't you know what's going on here and this social media and that social media? They'll kick you, they'll kick you off. Well, let them do it. I'll still preach. We'll create our own book. Amen. Oh, 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 whoa. You got it right. Well, as long as we've got God's book, amen, we don't need any other book if we've got God's book. You're just getting it from the Lord today. <laughs> Calvary. That's what it's all about. Jesus died on a cross. You know what? That's offensive to some people. You can talk about anything and everybody and everything in our society today, but when you say the name of Jesus, people get agitated and people get aggravated. Listen to me, friend. You, you, don't, you, better not, you don't need to get aggravated. You don't need to get agitated. You just need to get regenerated. Right. This man Jesus that you hate and you despise, someday if you don't call upon him and be saved, you will lift your eyes in the devil's hell and you will regret it. That you didn't come to Jesus. Y'all still with me? Verse 5. Where's my water at? Oh, thank you. See, I need help. Do you need help today? Are you tired of the way you're living? You're tired. You're, you're frustrated. You, I know you've been through a lot lately. But listen, you wouldn't have got through it if it hadn't have been for the Lord. You need to quit fooling around with God. You need to quit uh, trying to live for God and live for the devil. You need to make up your mind who you're going to serve. It's Jesus or the world. It's Christ or the devil. Amen? Verse 5. They cried unto thee and were what? Oh my goodness. I can already see. I'm not going to get past this fifth verse. There's so much great truth here. How many is daddy and mama? And I still got mine and I love them. Amen. Mama, daddy, I love you. Congratulations on 65 years of marital blessing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you for taking me to church. Thank you for telling me about Jesus. Thank you for whipping me when I needed one. Thank you for disciplining me. Thank you for not letting me do everything that I wanted to do. Could I have an amen? amen. We wonder what's wrong with our children. We're letting them do everything under the sun. Amen. Isn't it a funny thing? Things that were a sin 100 years ago and 50 years ago and 20 years ago, all of a sudden they're not a sin anymore to people. My friend, the Bible don't change. Hey, if the Bible says it's a sin, I, I don't care what poor Richard's almanac says. I, I don't care what Dr. Spock says. I don't care what uh, Confucius says. I, I don't care what Buddha says. I, I, I don't care what Muhammad says. If the Bible says it's sin, honey, you better take your hands off of it and you better get as far away as you can from sin. Mm. Boy, it's good to be back. It's 
good to have a church where I can have the liberty and I have the freedom to preach. But word of God, the way it is. Have you ever been to a place where that not only you were crying, but others were crying with you? You know what we need to do? Just not as a local congregation, but we need to do this not only as Tennesseans and Carter Countyans and Elizabethans and or Elizabethtonians, get that right, and Johnson Cityans and Unicoians and Grayans. <laughs> I've got people here from Gray, but Hamptonians. You know what we need to do? Irwinians. I'm gonna miss somebody. Jonesborians, <laughs> Jonesboroughians. Yeah, not that you're boring. Amen. You know what we need to do today? Mm. We need to humble ourselves and fall on our faces before Almighty God and ask Him to forgive us of our rebellion and our disobedience to His Word. And we need to pray that He would forgive us of all these millions on top of millions of little beautiful baby boys and girls that's been murdered by abortion. Let me tell you why this leftist liberal crowd is making a lot of noise. They can't stand it that there's laws being made right now that's taken away their influence. And by the way, we're awful, we're awful quick to criticize our leaders when they do something or say something wrong, but we ought, to, we ought to everyone write a letter, we ought to everyone get a hold of our local people and let, say thank you in the state of Tennessee, it's now illegal to have an abortion if they hear a heartbeat. And I say thank God. I say thank God. You may think life's not precious, but I, I still think it's precious. Life is precious because it comes from God. It's a gift. Anybody that can look at a little beautiful baby and, 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 and can take a knife to them or, or can uh, shoot, a, shoot a, a, a shot to them, a needle, uh, or, or can uh, kill them, that, that, that little Boswell girl, Evelyn, was that her name? Was it, it little Evelyn? I, every time I see that little, that little toddler's face, it, it brings tears to my eyes. It breaks my heart. We're living in a day and an age when life is not respected anymore. And I say it's a shame. And I might as well get this out too. Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee, yes, they fought in the Confederacy, but they were two of the most a consecrated, devoted Christians that ever served in an army. So these people are getting up and, and raising Cain and, and saying this and saying that. Listen, friend, you need to read. Oh, do they still teach American history in our public schools? They used to teach Tennessee history. They still teach Tennessee history in the seventh grade in our public schools? I hope so. Listen. I, slavery was an evil thing. It was wicked. Sure it was. No other human being deserves to be treated like a less of a human being or like a dog. I played basketball. I, some of my dearest friend, friends are, are black people and I love them and I know they love me and I know they would run through fire for me and I would run through fire for them. Listen church, we need to get over this bunch of foolishness and nonsense and we need to come together as the body of Christ. Well, where can we come together? At the cross. At the cross. You've heard the old saying, on Golgotha's hill, at the cross everything's level. And what the, what the meaning of that is, I've never got to go to the Holy Land, but I know it's, it's on a hill. It's called the skull. But what the, the person means about Calvary, there's a song written about it that says the ground's level. What it means there is that black man, white man, red man, yellow man, wherever man, that we all are equal in the sight of God. That God doesn't love one race of people more than the other race of people. That He loves us all with a perfect love. And whosoever will can come and take of the water of life freely. I tell you, people's got some funny and strange beliefs. A 
black man shouldn't be treated with disrespect because he's a black man. But neither should a white man be treated with disrespect because he's white. Some of these people I think, uh, think we're crazy. That we don't have a lick of sense. And anybody that wants to get rid of the police, they surely ain't got a lick of sense. It's foolishness. Now, preacher, listen, instead of raising a bunch of commotion about some statues, we need to be falling on our face and confessing our sins and forsaking our sins. We need to cry out unto the Lord. And the cross is a good place to start. Now, the Lord didn't stay on the cross, and he don't want us to stay there either. Amen. We don't worship a dead Savior. We worship, he did die, but we worship a living and a glorified, a, a resurrected uh, and exalted Lord and Savior. And we don't, have, uh, we don't have to crucify him over again. By the way, that's blasphemous. He, was, he died once. That's all it took. Once. Anybody glad you come to church? We need to fall on our face before God. Where's Brother Joel and Brother Russ? Come on up. I ain't, I ain't got to, I, we'd be here all day preaching through this whole psalm. I, I'm not going to try to. It's, it's such, a, such a song of magnitude. I can't do it justice. Notice verse 5. They cried unto thee and were what? What's that next word? Would you agree with your pastor today that we need deliverance in many ways? They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. That word there, confounded, it means ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Yes, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that don't know the Lord. But unto us which are saved, it's the power of God. Would you, would you stand with me, please? Would you bow your heads? And where I'm sitting here, you'll have to raise your hand good and high so I can see you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Are you here today and you're not a Christian? You don't know Christ. Would you raise your hand and say, that's me, preacher. I need to get saved. I need to come to the cross. I need to call upon Jesus and ask him to save my soul. Would you raise your hand and say, pray for me? Anybody at all? Anybody at all? Are you here today and you just need to take a fresh trip to Calvary. You need to come to Jesus. You need to cry out unto Him. There's some things that you need that Jesus we know died for your sins on the cross. You need to leave them there with Him. You need to get forgiveness of Him. Get cleansing from Him. Would you raise your hand? I know I've been saved, preacher, but there's some things I need to come and turn over to Jesus. Will you pray? Will you pray for me? And God's people pray for me. Anybody like that? Raise your hand good and high where I can see. Anybody? Anybody at all? How many here knows Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Would you raise your hand good and high and give Jesus glory? Give Him thanks. Amen. Give Him thanks and give Him honor. Praise God. Praise God. My friend, if you couldn't do that, oh, let me introduce you to the best friend you'll ever have. Let me introduce you to Jesus. He died for you on the cross and shed his blood. Won't you come to him today? Call upon him and be saved. Won't you do it? Won't you do it? Won't you do it? Just come right here at this altar. Somebody will pray with you. Call upon the Lamb of God. Ask him to save you. Forgive you of your sins. And if you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. If you believe that, you call upon him in faith and believe it. Ask him to save you. He'll do it according to his word. All right. I know we can't get everybody around this altar. 
I shared this with Brother Wes. I, I believe it was yesterday or day before. If you're as burdened for this nation as I am, for your family as I am, for our neighborhood and, and the work of the Lord, I want to summon you to cry out to God with me. Can we take a few solemn moments and minutes after we give the invitation to the lost, we sing a verse. Then I want us to have a special prayer for one another, for our people. But I want us to have a special prayer for our nation. Will you join me in that? Lord, we love you and we praise you. Have your way in this invitation. Save the lost. May the backslider come back to you and rededicate their life. And we'll praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Number 264. Kneel at the cross, Christ will meet you there. Kneel at the cross while he waits for you. Come to Jesus today, won't you do it? Listen to his voice, leave with him, leave with him your care, your care. and begin life anew. Or you'll find help. Leave every you'll care. find forgiveness. Leave you'll find pardon for your sins. You'll find eternal life. Jesus will meet you there. Kneel at the cross. There Personally, locally, stately, nationally, and internationally. There's another thing. I shared this with Brother West. I shared it with Brother Alfred. Pray for Brother Alfred, by the way. He's down in Texas, and this pandemic is, uh, you know, we're still not through with it yet. But he and I were, were, were sharing and we were praying. Do you really believe that God has the power to drive this thing back to the pits of hell? How many believes that God can do it? Amen. There's no question that God can do it. Has God used this to maybe get a hold of some people? I believe he has. But I know he has the power. He can drive this thing away. Do we believe that? I don't think it's wishful thinking. I'm not telling you uh, to not wear your mask or face coverings. I'm not telling you if, you're, if you want to exercise social distancing, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not putting you down for that. But I still believe that God has all. Jesus, before he went to heaven, do, you, we, do we believe this when he told his disciples this? He said, Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of, of the world. Do we believe that? Do we believe that when Jesus said all power is given me in heaven and earth, do we believe that? Amen. Do we believe that if enough of God's people, enough of the saints of God cry out to him, first repent of our sins and get right with him. Get right with one another. And cry to the Lord in one voice, he'll hear us. Do you believe it? I believe that. 
And I want to challenge us, are you, are you with me? Amen. That's awful weak. Are you with me? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we come before thy throne of grace, realizing how small, how insignificant that we are. But we know, God, even though things around us may seem to be having the upper hand, we know it does not have an upper hand with you. And Lord, we're crying out to you as your people. First of all, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins. Oh, God, help us to love one another, to respect one another. Lord, to do what's right. Lord, to honor you in all of our ways. Forgive us, oh God. Uh, of our sins in America. And Lord, Lord, we know, we know, and we ask in faith believing in the name of Jesus, we ask, Lord, that you will send a Holy Ghost revival down upon your people. God, let it start with me. God, we want you and we love you and we honor you today. And Lord, we ask in, in Jesus' name, Father, we ask that you will just drive this old pandemic away, this virus. You have power over it. Lord, we don't have to live in fear of this thing. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be your people, to share your word and your gospel and your love with a lost and dying world. Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people might rejoice in thee? We love you, Jesus. Now, Lord, send revival. Oh, sin revival. Can everybody say those two words with me and, and mean it from the depths of your being? One, two, three. Sin revival. Lord, we need it. I believe this is the only thing going to save us as a nation. We know in our, our nation's past, God, we face times like this. We know that Spanish flu. Lord, other things that's come against us as a people. But, but when, I, when, when your people, when God's people repented of their sins and got right with Jesus, and cried out for revival. You sent it. And Lord, if we ever needed a great awakening, we need one now. Amen. And we're asking you to do it, Father. Do it because of who you are. Do it for your own honor, for your own glory, for your own praise. Lord, use us as your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Oh, don't forget to pay the Lord's tithes and give your offering to him before you leave the house of God in the front and back for you. You're at liberty to go in the fear and the love of Jesus Christ. Come back tonight and sing the Lord.